I'm waiting on a platform and I'm entirely on my own. I'm entirely isolated. I'm lost. I'm confused, but a train arrives, so I get on it. And as soon as I get on it, that train hurtles somewhere I don't want to go, but I'm on it, so I have to remain on it. Gentlemen, I'll arrive in at Reading. <laughs> so, uh, my name's Natasha Devon, but everyone calls me Tash, and you can too. And I am one half of um, an organisation called Body Gossip. We live in a world where one in ten young people will develop an eating disorder before they reach 25. We live in a world in which 30% of young men under 19 and 70% of young women cite their relationship with their body as their number one worry. Their number one worry. You ask groups of people to describe the perfect woman and, and you get Barbie, or if you're in Hackney, mixed race Barbie, but it's, it's still Barbie. <laughs> and that informs our ideas about how we're supposed to look. We're trying to encourage the idea that you can look completely different from someone else, but be equally attractive in your own way. I'm going to paint a little picture for you now of what I was like when I was 17. I was very, very different uh, from how I am now. I, um, I, I told you I grew up in Essex. Essex is very judgy. You either have to opt in or you have to opt out. And if you opt in, you have to look a certain way or they chase you out of the county with sticks. And I think, looking back, that that was sort of my teenage rebellion thing because my mother was a catwalk model back in the 70s. And so I kind of went, well, if you're going to insist on being really beautiful and glamorous and elegant, I just really won't be. I'll be really clever just to annoy you. This is probably my favorite picture ever of all time. My mum had just won a beauty pageant Look, you would just never know <laughs> that she would literally had a baby um, only months before. But I also like the fact that she's, she's sort of holding me a bit like I'm a handbag, um, <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm an accessory. I, I love that. So um, I discovered within a week of moving to London that in fact I did like fashion, that that was a part of my personality. And one day I was approached by a model agent who caught me when I was just getting enthusiastic about fashion and beauty. And I became obsessed with being the thinnest model I could possibly be. This is kind of my weekend breakfast. This is what I'd have kind of on a, on a Saturday or Sunday probably. When I was bulimic, I used to eat everything. I used to eat anything I could get my hands on. Um, and it wasn't about how it tasted or whether I enjoyed it. It was about the feeling of being full and then the feeling of getting rid of it. Because I got really good at throwing up. I was like an expert in it. And my parents had tickets to go and see uh, Santana, who I love, the guitar player. And I couldn't go. I remember laying on my bed and weeping for the lost experience because there were some days where I just, the all-consuming panic of the idea that everyone was judging me and that I just wasn't good enough to be out there in the world. It got to the stage where I was binging and purging, you know, upwards of seven or eight times a day. And that's all I'd do with my day. There was, there was nothing else. I used to think of it like I've, I've boarded a train. That train ends at the stop where I make myself sick. But I've boarded it and I can't get off. It's about wanting a different life. And when you see these people who have this idealised form of a life, uh, in the public eye that all subscribe to one very narrow body type. 
They look so happy, they look so glamorous. Um, and the only way you can copy them is by being as thin as you possibly can. Is it parenting? Is it schools? Is it society? Is it the media? It's lots of different things. And if they come together in the right way, then um, you know you you are very likely to get to get an eating disorder. Or equally, you might self harm, or you might uh, get an alcohol addiction, or you might start taking drugs. Um, they all have one common root, and that's low self esteem, which is why my class I always call it a self esteem class. Oh, look at that. And I realised that we lived in a world that had not created that issue, but allowed that issue to blossom. That there were things that made me having an eating disorder easier. And that's what made me angry. And that's what made me go and get therapy and get better. And that's what made me come up with the idea of doing a body confidence lesson. I don't think that people would be so miserable a lot of the time if we weren't told that if we looked different, our lives would be better. And I'm going to show you a video now that demonstrates who I think is to blame. It takes you on a fast forwarded journey from how you go from advertising to insecurity to a surgeon's office. I can't stop advertisers from doing this because I don't know them and I don't know where they live. But I can teach you how they do it. At the moment, I teach about three or four classes on average a week during term time. Since 2008, we've worked with 20,000 students. I'm here as an ex-model who uh, loves fashion. Also uh, as somebody who sometimes goes on TV. And then I'm also co-director of the UK's most publicised positive body image campaign. The other director is Ruth Rogers, who is here. <laughs> and there are some people who consider those two roles to be um, inherently contradictory. There is not a day that goes by where someone doesn't find a new and imaginative way uh, to accuse me of being a hypocrite. I, apart from if I'm in the bath, I never even see myself without a little bit of makeup on. So um, it, I wouldn't feel uncomfortable with it, but it wouldn't be me. It's not right for me to judge someone because they don't wear makeup. Equally, it's not right for someone else to judge me because I do. So, are you curvy or are you skinny? Are you a nerd or are you captain of the sports team? Are you a feminist or are you fabulous? You must choose. This is what we're told all the time. And the real battle is the people, everyone, all of us, versus the corporations with multi-billion pound budgets at their disposal, specifically allocated to the task of making us feel insecure. When you feel like it's okay to be you, that you're fine, just the way you are, that's when you can start to have fun. That's when fashion becomes what it should be. There's this campaign called No Page Three, and uh, we were asked to join it, and uh, we wanted to send out a press release with some photos of you girls, because you, you all got such you know, diverse looks. 
and also uh, of myself. And I have a big scar going all the way down my stomach from an operation I had because my spleen ruptured. Hopefully inspiring other people with scars to not be ashamed of theirs. Um, what type of extensions are these? Clipping. Are they monofiber or real hair? They're real hair. Okay. Hmm. I think it needs some moisture. I think I need some moisture. <laughs> <laughs> If we put, put more of a diverse range of different shapes and sizes and ages and races into the public eye, it doesn't matter really what they look like, just that they're different from each other. Natasha has uh, just telling us her story about her operation in the hospital, um, where you almost died, you were 24 hours basically from, mm -hmm. from, from dying. Yeah. Due to assumptions that was made about her lifestyle and her weight. They, they looked at me and told me, well clearly these abdominal pains have something to do with the fact that you've overeaten or overdrunk. It's not bloated, it's not bloated, but you've just got a big stomach. And I was like, well no, I know what my stomach looks yeah. like and this is not what it looks like. So, um, so they're basically saying, you know, your, 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 your fat problem is your fat. And, and, yeah. And, yeah. You know, you don't want to accept. This is it. our medical opinion. Yeah. yeah. So technically, I should still be recovering, but um, the kind of person that I am, I've, I'm always on the move, teaching teenagers self-esteem, and I wanted to show them how strong and healthy my size 16 self was. <laughs> It's okay, I think I found it. It targets weak, limp, lifeless. What that advert is actually saying to you is, buy this shampoo and you will be Cheryl Cole. And everything that you associate with Cheryl Cole, all the wealth, the glamour, the fame, it will be yours. Now when I say it to you in words like that, clearly bullshit. But in order to suggest to you that you need to transform your life, I have to imply that there's something wrong with your life right now. In order to make you want that shampoo, they have to imply that there's something wrong with your hair. The side message that you get from that advert is, you're not good enough. You need to be more like Cheryl. Buy our shampoo. And when you examine most of the adverts that you see, they're all giving you that message on some level. You are not good enough. There's a new thing called a vagina facial that you can go and have your vagina cleansed, toned, moisturised and exfoliated. No. That was my reaction. Where? In a salon. Can you say... Can I, I'd like the vagacial, please. Vagacial. Yeah, and then go, that's ten of your best things you can. Oh, yeah. Hello, oh, yeah. Sorry, I think they're going to come and take you through in a minute. Okay. Good to see you, love. I'll get myself a vagacial. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a moisturiser in there. It's got this special acid which just makes the skin look really, really smooth and lovely. It's just caring for that part of your body. So, Natasha. Hello. <laughs> what do you um, reckon? <laughs> Vajayshal, what do you think? It's a load of nonsense. Why would we want it done? I think that there is such a thing as mindless grooming. You know when you just have something done because because it's there, or maybe you think you should. And then before you know it, there's an expectation placed on you that that's what you're supposed to do. And then suddenly it's like, oh, you don't get a vagacial. You're that so lazy. What's wrong with you? And, and that's where's, not true. where's it going to end? Are we going to have treatments for your liver, for your spleen, for your internal organs? Well, this will make your colon look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is very But you're ludicrous. judging women. No, I'm not judging women. I'm, saying, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you my opinion. The things you learn on this that program. I know. <laughs> Loads of lovely tweets after um, after the uh, debate today. One girl saying uh, that she thinks that um, I'm a, I'm a minx because I was discussing my pants with Eamon Holmes, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I haven't had a, had a negative one yet.
We're so used to seeing airbrush perfection all around us that suddenly just being a normal human being has become unacceptable. We've been trained to hate ourselves. And it's up to you, it's up to people your age to take a stand against that because otherwise beauty is gonna become more and more extreme until you have to have Botox. You don't have a choice. You have to have surgery. It's part of grooming. But if you make intelligent decisions about what you want to do with your body, and it's your body, you can do whatever you like with it, then future generations of women won't have to feel as insecure as women do today. Would anybody like to ask me a question? I had bulimia for seven years. There's a lot of people that will tell you that once you've had it, you've got an issue for life, but I promise you that's not true. I just want to say how much I really enjoyed it. It's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Take care. Bye, girls. Have a good day. Thank you. See you later. Um, also, I think... um, um, I just thought that was really, really, really good. Yeah. Yay. It's really helpful. <laughs> There are so many stops on this route of beauty, of fashion, of eating, of health, of body image. There are so many stops and you can control where your train stops. We're all driving our own train. I will never be what you want and that's all right. Got my skin in light and my body in tight and that's all right. But if I might, I'm gonna stand and fly. I will never be what you want, and that's all right. I play my own damn tune.